finish line in Cordoba is fast approaching, but the 40th Dakar Rally continues at a furious pace, with drivers and navigators doing their utmost to secure themselves a place on the podium. One man in the running is Bernard Tinbrunker, who captured another stage victory for the team alongside Michel Perrin in stage 11. Let's recap. In the stage which is very difficult and where the fight is still there, so it's not a win that you you get because all people are slowing down, so of course it's a good value. Bernard went uh, very well, won the stage, so well done to him, but uh, for sure, you know, uh, further, starting further back is a big advantage. Very, very rough, you know, it was not easy, you know, but okay. We finish uh, today with uh, only two flat tyres and uh, yeah. It was a really uh, hard stage. Yeah, it was uh, really amazing to, uh, to do this job today. No, it was really difficult because it was not an easy stage and uh, also for uh, Michel uh, it was really difficult to, to find the right uh, track and uh, we were only the fourth car and uh, the tracks go left, right and uh, no, sometimes we make our own decision, our own lines. And we saw when we finished the first part of the stage that we nearly catch Janil or at least nine from the 12 minutes gap we had. So we knew we were on a good process and uh, in the second stage it was even better. So. Gambala is always a difficult stage. Um, and, uh, you know, we were second on the road uh, behind Peter Hansel. Uh, we tried to follow his tracks, you know, most places where we could, some places we lost it and then you have to uh, find a way and then open the road. So, uh, not very easy. So, on to stage 12, a 523 kilometer journey from Fiambala to San Juan. Once again, it turned out to be another excellent day for Toyota Kazoo Racing South Africa, with the team winning their fourth stage in 2018, while Nasa Latia and Mathieu Bermel made it a hat-trick of victories. Well, I mean, a big day actually. Uh, quite a lot happened in the stage that is not uh, totally transparent. Of course, the three Hiluxes ran really well. Bernard leading the way this morning. Janiel had two punctures but was still right on the pace. And then fi and finally Nasser uh, taking the win, which was uh, really great. Yeah, uh, we win today and uh, really we try to push and uh, you know, the Toyota Hilux, uh, really a uh, strong car and uh, yeah, I am quite happy to to close the gap, you know, to the second place. And uh, yeah, still, still uh, two days left, and uh, we try to do our best, uh, at least to to win, you know. Very good. Uh, to be honest, uh, for me, it was the first time to open the stage, uh, also together with Michel, of course. Uh, it was quite difficult uh, to find uh, the way in the, in the weddies and uh, it was really it was really tough uh, the first stage but we managed it uh, well we finished uh, the first part uh, on p1 with two and a half minutes in front of uh, the number two and uh, no it uh, was quite well oh, we had a good stage uh, just a pity this morning we had two punctures um, you know just as we caught up to the guys and um, we had the first puncture and then uh, a couple of kilometers later we had another one so you know that put us back a bit and then the second half of the special uh, I got caught in the dust of uh, the prey in a very bad place so I was stuck in his dust for a while they were obviously going uh, slower he was just protecting Carlos so lost a couple of minutes there um, but other than that you know good um, would have been nice to have won the stage because I think without those uh, issues we could have easily won the stage. Four stage victories is, is great and you're absolutely right we came here to win but uh, we're fighters the whole team is still energized ready to go we'll, we're very happy with the four stage wins we'd like it to be six the guys are going to try and make it six um, win the last two stages if we can and um, yeah the elusive first place is looking further and further away. Next, the penultimate stage of the 2018 Dakar Rally 13. Competitors will take on the dunes of San Juan, but will also have to cross an area of the dreaded Fesh Fesh in a 369 kilometer race to Cordoba. Tomorrow is, um, is largely a WRC gravel type stage, but it does start in some sand. So there's going to be some debate tonight still about how, um, how high we're going to run the car. Obviously, for the WRC, we want the car lower and we can stiffen it up slightly, change the setup. But until we've gone through all the roadbook with the co-drivers, we can't determine uh, how to set the car down tonight. Well, it's a 370 kilometer stage. I think it's pretty much the same type of stage as today. Uh, there's some sand in the beginning, uh, some, some soft, soft dunes. 
we need to cross for the first uh, 40 k's and uh, you know from there it's 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 pretty much uh, like today oh tomorrow the first stage is a typical sand stage where you need traction i don't think any navigation problem and the second one is in the wrc area so we change completely the character of the rally huh? tomorrow um, it's maybe a faster stage a little bit uh, sandy you know but uh, the last part will be uh, will be like uh, more uh, gravel and more uh, forest yes to to cordoba As you have no doubt witnessed during the 2018 Dakar Rally, the Toyota Gazoo Racing South Africa Hilux can withstand severe punishment. The Racing Hilux can tackle extremely rough obstacles at speeds that will make a standard bucky fall apart, let alone keep the driver's insides intact while it flies over rough terrain at very illegal speeds. The secret, suspension. There's various aspects to the suspension. Everybody you know, immediately jumps to the shock absorber or the damper as we call them because that absorbs the energy from the bump or hole in the road or step up or dune that the car is attacking. So the damper is connected to the uh, to car via suspension links and those links have got a geometry that we call it attached to them and that geometry puts different forces into the chassis and makes the shock absorber absorb the impacts in different ways. So you can't just come here and expect that you're going to put, uh, change the shock absorber settings and the car is going to be perfect. You've got a spring on top of that as well which keeps the platform as we call it, the car level. But or in the end, the, probably the damper does 50% of everything. So this is the basic damper which we have on the car. This is the rod that moves in and out on the car. Um, obviously in the bump, that is rebound, as it moves out. Inside the damper, this is what it would basically look like. The shim stacks I was talking to about earlier sits on that side of the piston, on the opposite side of the piston. As it moves in, the bottom side of the shims regulate the speed of what it travels through, or moves in. And obviously on the way out, the top half of the stack works. And that regulates how much oil you're allowed to flow through the piston at various speeds. Well, I mean, especially with a new car like this, uh, with the dampers, with the shock absorbers, um, it's quite crucial to find a sweet spot, you know, and it's, it's, more, it's, it's more difficult than it, than it sounds. Uh, there's a lot of variables, uh, especially with this car with a new geometry. But at the end of the day, you find something that is a compromise and that works well in, in all conditions. Uh, you do have a setting on the damper which you can put a couple of clicks on here and there to, to improve it, but basically you've got to uh, make sure that the, the valving um, is right inside the damper and that you've got the right feeling as a driver. Uh, Janeiro as a development driver is, is really good. He's calm, he's not emotional, he's analytical. He's mechanical as well, so he understands how the damper works. Now, as a driver myself, this can be very dangerous because you can start thinking too much about the mechanicals and not enough about the, the driving. But because he's interested in it, he's interested in the detail, and the devil is in the detail, and that will allow him to do probably more runs with very small changes than a driver who's not interested in it and said, well, you know, perhaps it's not wasting their time. Whereas Jamil will say, okay, let's go down there. It didn't work, no problem. We'll go back to there. Well, you know, the, the feeling of, 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 of the, the damper settings comes back to, uh, you know, time in the seat. The more time you spend in the seat, the more you get used to the car and the, the, the better you are at feeling uh, small changes. And, and at the end of the day, the small changes can make, um, you know, the difference. So uh, the more time you spend in the seat, the better feeling you have. Daniel is extremely, extremely good at this. One shin change, you'll tell immediately yes or no. 